Hi everyone. Um, my name is Adewale Abdul Aziz. So, and um, um, I'll be taking the NS102, which is um, laws of UX. So, um, yeah, let's start. So, what you learn um from this um topic? So, the first thing you learn is the laws of UX, right? Then the second thing, the importance of these laws. And thirdly, how to apply this the law. How to apply the laws in everyday solutions. So, um, what are laws of UX? So, laws of UX is a collection of best practices that designers can consider when building design interfaces. So, these laws aim to explain how users interact with digital interfaces and provide insights into designing more intuitive, user-friendly experiences. So, they serve as a foundational principle for UX designers to create effective and enjoyable products by understanding user behavior, cognitive processes, and perceptual tendencies. So basically, those of UX are, you know, what you consider when, you know, um, designing a product, right? So you don't just, you know, um, make assumptions based on, on what you think is right. So um, there are laws, you know, that can guide what you are, or like your decision making when, when designing a product. So, um, that's what lot of UX are. So um, yeah. Um, the first law that I have here, Jacob's law. So Jacob's law states that users prefer your sites to be designed the way other sites they use are designed. So this law was defined by the director of the Nessing Norman Group, Jacob Nessing, who insists you design for familiarity. So designing according to existing mental models reduces the friction involved in learning to navigate the design. This in turn improves user experience as users can easily focus on the task at hand. So basically, um, what Jacob Jacob's law is saying is, you know, users, you know, they 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 prefer you designed your you know, products the way the other products that they are used to are. So like, don't don't go and you know, come and you know design your own um bring your own design which is you know something that they are not familiar with. So use something they are you know, already used to. So that's the learning curve for that. For that, your products you know, will be very, very small. So, like, um, you know, they come in onto your products, they already feel like, you know, okay, this 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 looks familiar. So, they will not be scared, right? So, um, then you, okay, so take for example, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, you know, Framer, right? Uh, it's, it's a um, low code um, web design platform. So, if you take Framer, so you can you can you can check it out. So Frema.com, right? So if you take Frema and Figma, if you compare their interface, it's very, very similar. And I'm sure the well, one of the reasons why they did it that way is because of um Jacob's law, right? So they know most of their um users who will be designers, right? So they went ahead and designed their interface like very, very similar. In fact, if, if you if you if you open an account now and you know look at the interface, you will think you are inside of Figma. So me like seeing that already, like I, I feel some type of way, like, okay, yes, this 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 is familiar. This is like you know Figma. So there's no reason for me to be scared, right? So um that's what Jacob's law is talking about. So the next law, aesthetic usability usability effect. So users perceive visually pleasing sites as more usable. So right, um, put another way, first impressions matter. So make sure yours is a visually appealing one right? one so basically if you compare a design that is you know um like visually pleasing so you know the colors are with each other everything just flows together in, in 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 a perfect sync and you know a website that is you know poorly designed that you know the colors are you know they are they are too bright you know um the text they are, they are like four different fonts on 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 the single page you're looking at so you know, everything is just you know disagreeing with each other. So if you compare those two designs together, like normally you what you assume, what everybody will assume is okay, yes, this one that is you know, smooth and everything agrees with each other, that is visually pleasing, will be you know usable, more usable than the one that is you know um poorly designed. So that's what um aesthetic usability effect is saying. So the next law, X law. So too many and too complicated choices reduces the odds of the user actually making a choice. So essentially, too many choices leads to choice or analysis paralysis. 
So information overload preventing users from taking any action at all. So um like don't complicate um your designs, don't don't you know um punish the users with too many choices. So like if you must if you must like add all those um you know choice, then you can break it down into steps, right? So let them like reduce the options that they are picking from, you know, one at a time. Reduce the option. Don't you know over don't don't just you know put everything together and overload the users with you know too many options. So it will be very, very difficult for them to make the decision. So um next next one is goal gradient effects. So the closer users are to a goal, the faster they are going to work to complete it. So for designers, this means it's essential to provide a visual representation of the progress made or highlights the remaining steps to motivate users. So um so um like this um take for example if you are filling a form right so um like it's it's easier it's easy for you you know like knowing when what you are filling with hand right so it might be you know okay one of six or probably there is a loading um you know bar at the at the at the top or at the bottom right so the more question you fill you know the bar will increase you know you know that okay by the time this bar gets to the the end right so that means you will have you know finished um filling the form so that's what um Google Gradient Effect is talking about in fact that's I think yeah it has happened to me before that you know I was filling a form like that and I don't know where I was like I just I was just filling and filling and filling and filling the form I, I didn't know where I was at all to the point that you know I had to like you know close that form and just you know left it so but unfortunately I was actually very very close to completing that form but because I don't know where I was so I just had to like close it. It was later when the person that sent the form to me was like, you know, like said he was looking for my name and um, stuff like that. Uh, he didn't see my name <laughs> among the people that have filled it. So I was like, you know, forced to like go back to it. And then I I I I discovered that I was actually close to you know, completing the form. So don't, you know, punish the users. Don't, like wherever they are, let them know exactly where they are. So next one, law of proximity. Users group together elements or objects that are positioned close to each other. So like the law of common region, this law is also a grouping principle that makes it easy for users to interact with your design. This means that users perceive elements that are near each other or arranged close together in a series to be linked. So basically, if you if we take you know a card, for example, so like a card design, you know, you have the the um, image at the top, right? And you have like a Type two, then you have like a short description, then probably then you have you know like a um what's it called um CTA action button at, at the bottom. So like merely looking at it, you you know like these things are you know they go together because you know, they are very very you know in close proximity to each other. So you know that okay, this this set of information is together, then you know, probably you have another one like beside it, then you know, okay, this one too is you know, they are together like that. But that's what slow of proximity is saying that's you know. If they are close like that, you know, in a in a very, very close they're in a very close proximity like that, you know, users will, you know, tend to like group those elements or objects together. So the next one, law of pregnancy. So people interpret complex or ambiguous images in simple forms. Because interpretation takes cognitive efforts. So your audience will always find simplicity in complex or ambiguous designs to save themselves from the mental overload. So it's why call to action buttons, CTA buttons, tend to be rectangles rather than hexagons or any other complex structure. So like people will always, you know, like no matter how sophisticated your 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 design is or yes, your design is. So people will always, you know, tend to like break it down. The, the brain will break it down into the like the, the simplest form. So that's you know, to save you know, them from you know the cognitive effort of you know having to process the whole, the whole thing. So um don't you know um punish your users you know by you know doing like too many um uh, by, by complicating your design right so of course the brain will still have to like you know break it down to the to the simplest one so they said it's why call to action buttons you know tend to be you know, rectangle so um so and i don't think i've i've actually seen you know a call to action button that is um other than rectangle although i, I think i've seen a uh, circle but yeah to action, call to action button, you know, city buttons. So, like, you know, your submit button, you know, the login button, sign up button, it's always, you know, rectangle, right? So, that's um, 
فلو اوف بارنرز تو اوكام جيزو سو سيلكت ا ديزاين ويز ذا لوست بوسيبل كومبليكيشن سو اوكام جيزو كومز ان اونلي وين يو ار تشوزينج بيتوين ديزاين بروتوتايبس ذا جول از تو از تو سيلكت ذا ديزاين ذات سيمبلست امونج اول ذا اوبشنز سو ان شورت ايم تو كيب ات سيمبل سو ام بيزيكلي دونت كومبليكيت يور ديزاينز سو Like they said, it comes it comes in handy when you know design prototypes. So like we are choosing from um between design prototypes. So basically, probably you know you've gone to the prototype prototyping stage. Then you have like you know two prototypes, right? And then you place the two prototypes in 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 the hands of user while testing, right? So let them decide which one is you know, easier for them, because that's the thing. If you complicate your designs, and then possibly there is you know. You, your competitor, probably you have a competitor, right? And then your competitors, you know, they are like doing something that is very easy for users to, to like make use of. Their own designs are not complicated. So people will leave your own and your own products for their products because nobody wants to like, you know, um, punish themselves like, you know, by by um, using a product that is you know, um, difficult for them to, to understand. So always keep this in mind. Don't complicate your designs. Always like, you know, make it very, very simple so that it's easier for users to understand. So um, next one, Postal's law. So be, be flexible in what you accept from your from your users and limit what you ask of them. So like two things are involved here. So first one, take what users share with you. For example, if you ask a user to share their country, so take, for example, probably they are from the United States, right? And the entire US. So, instead of the United States in, in full. So like adapt your design in a way that it will accept that US and still translate it to the United States. So then um, the second one, ask for limited information. This means you ask for only what's important. So like with a filling in form or like any other any other way, shall, but you know, let's take filling in form for example. So and you know you have you don't you don't you have no need for um their age or marital status or things like that. So don't don't ask for it. Like don't because that's that's extra right. Even that will take space in and in, in the database. So like there's you don't need it. So there's no reason for you to like you know, include it there. Don't include it there. So ask for just the things that are important that you need. So um the next law, Tesla's law. So Tesla's law or the law of conservation of long complexity states that there's a certain amount of complication that's intrinsic to every system. So admittedly, each design has a certain level of complexity to it. Your responsibility is to reduce the complexity as much as possible. So um, like no matter what um, products that you're designing, right? So there is always a certain level of complexity that will always be there. So you, you cannot you know, get rid of everything, but the, the goal is to reduce that complexity to the best minimum, right? So, um. That's what um, this part is saying. Then uh, moving on, it's, it focuses on encouraging users to take one step at a time without overwhelming them with tons of features as they physically have. So like if you if you take Figma, for example, so right, Figma has a side to designers and they have another side to um what's it called? Um the developers, right? So but when they started, they started with you know, designs for the, the part for designers, right? So even though they have they had the um the um developers at mind, so but they started with the part for designers. So and even the part for the that part for designers was not perfect when they started. So it was as you know people were using it, you know, making complaints this this and that. They you know they are like um, correcting the complaints and you know making their products better. So that's that's you know how they did it. You know? But because if you say if you do you, you will not launch. Until your product is perfect, you might never launch, or even another um, what is it called? Another product might even beat you to the market and you know take all your um, customers away. So like, <laughs> you don't don't wait till the product is you know super super perfect before you launch. So as 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 um you know, as people are using it, making complaints and everything like that, you know, you will be you know improving the system and and all. So like they start with that, that part, then as time goes on, you know, they improve their um products over the years, they improve it and you know, see, you know, they get to a point that are like, okay, they are confident that the designer side is you know strong enough, then you know, they 
is how to move on to the developer side. So um, the next law, the organic effects. So users remember interrupted tasks better than completed tasks. They turn, it turned out incomplete or interrupted tasks were easier to remember than completed tasks. So um, I'm sure we've probably, you know, some of us have been in the situation whereby, you know, probably are trying to solve um, some questions and, you know, there's a certain um, question that, that you know, give you a run for your money, right? You know, that is very, very difficult to uh, solve. So probably you might you 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 ended up in even taking that question to someone else to like help you solve it. So you you notice you always remember that one that gave you issue rights above the ones that you know are very very easy for you to solve. You might not even remember the ones that are, you know easy for you to solve anymore. But that one that gave you issue any any day you see it you be like ah that's that question that gave me issue I had to like you know, take it to um the person that helped me to solve it. So that's what organic effect is talking about. So it says starting a task creates task related tension that's felt when a job is in interrupted or incomplete. So then that's another thing too. If you are doing something and then you know it was interrupted, like you always remember that one that okay, it was this thing that I was doing that you know I was you know interrupted and you always remember that one above the ones that you know went smoothly and you know, there's there's no issue. So they said this tension is what improves memory of the task and is only relieved when the task is completed. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the end of the um slides. Thank you for listening. Um, hi guys. So um this is about um the assignments and um additional materials. So um yeah, the assignment is you know um in two um main parts, you know, there is um a part for um um true and false, right? And um um there is multiple choice question. So but what I would say is you know, you guys should like um you know take your time doing it, like don't don't rush and re read the instructions very well, right? So um it's still the same way with all the other um the other multiple choice questions that you can, you guys have been doing. So do not rush and make sure to go through the additional materials. So I would share um this additional materials on on, on the Slack channel. So probably I will pin it to the group so, so that you guys can um have access to it. Or if you can type it, just post this and you know, type it into your browser and you know, check it. So read all the 21 laws and you know, look at it very well. So do not rush. <laughs> do not rush while you're doing your assignments. Yeah, um, I wish you guys um good luck. Yeah.